What is going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. So today we are finally finishing the move bumper. One of the last steps is getting this thing painted. And well, I couldn't decide what I wanted to do because I wanted to paint match it, but I still wanted to have the rugged factor with this truck. So my whole plan with this truck has been to kind of keep it rugged, kind of keep it practical. Um, I, I use this truck. This truck gets used to pull trailers. This truck gets used to go camping. This truck used to it's used to be a truck. Um, that's the whole reason I went with 10 wides and 35s. I got some hybrid mud terrain, all terrain tires because I do still do a lot of highway driving. But I mean, I've owned this truck for six months and I've I've actually had to use the four wheel drive like three times just in that six months because I actually use this truck. So I didn't want to go with this nice smooth paint matched bumper that I have to worry about getting scratched or you know chipping or anything like that because this truck over here this is my show truck this is I want everything to be perfect on this I want everything done right this truck I still want everything done right but I want it to be rugged still now I am doing paint matching I'm gonna paint match the headlights the mirrors you know stuff like that we're gonna be doing powder coating and everything but at the same time like I want this truck to be rugged. I, I want to be able to run into stuff, stand on the bumper if I have to work on something on, in the engine bay, you know, hook up a strap to it, put a winch on it, you know, whatever it might be. I want to be able to use this truck. So I opted to go with a bed liner, but I didn't want it just a black bumper because like, yes, the bumpers are black on this, but i you know, paint's already coming. We're getting that color matched before it goes to some shows this year. So we're, we're getting those color matched to the truck. Uh, that truck has its own makeover. It just happens slowly. But for the F-250, I wanted bed liner, but I didn't want just black bed liner. And I don't know if you guys noticed, that says tough and tintable. So right behind it, we have a quart of some light prairie tan metallic, which is the paint code on the F-250. We are going to be doing a paint matched bed liner on the bumper and get this thing matched to the truck. But there's one last thing I have to weld onto this bumper before it is complete. And I was waiting until I got some lights, but I don't have the lights yet. That's our light bar mounts. Um, whole reason I have to do this now is because when it comes time to paint this, if I have to weld anything, it's going to burn the paint on the front and I'm going to have to repaint it. So might as well just do it now, get it done out of the way. And if I have to adjust it a little bit in the future, you know, it happens. But at least I should be able to make it work. So we're going to get this thing set up on some saw horses, get those light bar brackets welded on, and uh, then get this thing prepped to be bedlined. in here and welded on get the focus there we go not the prettiest welds but they're structurally sound i went ahead and did another little light coat of paint back here as you can tell i painted the brackets now the back side is completely done i've painted every just about everywhere i can get to so it's majority covered now we're gonna flip this thing over i bought some sandpaper off amazon for a palm sander so we can get this thing all the same texture.
45 minutes of sanding later, this thing is all the same texture, just about all the same color. Now you can tell where the flap disc on the grinding wheel went a little excessive in some areas, kind of heavy through here, heavy through here, through here. Um, like with the flap disc, I couldn't get the palm sander in there. Same on that side, same with the uh, DOM tubing up here. So. It is what it is. I went over it with a stuff pad. I went over the entire thing with the stuff pad to knock any more debris or anything loose. But as you can tell, got a pretty good reflection all the way around. Uh, any slag I could find in here, on here, um, around here, and around here, I knocked down with a little slag hammer. I'm um, still that piece right there is the only one I could not get. But luckily, we are doing a bed liner, so some texture, it, it'll blend in. Um, I'm not doing a heavy texture on this. I'm kind of going for like a smooth bed liner coating. Um, there's different PSIs that you can run to get a different texture. Um, but now it's time to break into that box. Okay, so here's our Raptor liner. I got the kit that comes with the spray gun. It's four tintable bottles. Um, really the bumper should only take about two. Uh, so then I'll have two left over. So in the future when I do the bed, I'll just order another four bottle pack and we'll have six bottles so we can do quite a bit on the bed. Pull out all of our bottles. And then here's our gun. A little bit of a, a mixing cup and our hardener. Now, I've watched some videos on this and every single person said to mix it in a separate cup like this. You wanna dump all this out into here, dump the paint into here, dump the hardener in here, mix it and then you want to pull, put it back in here and connect the spray gun. The reason with that is because there isn't enough air in here for the paint to get all the way down and mix at the bottom. Uh, so you end up not getting to mix all the way through and you end up having a super, super light color and it's not color matched at all. Okay, so I was under the impression that this stuff sticks to bare metal because you know, they want you to, to get your, your bed pretty bare. Uh, but this says to localize exposed bare metal should be primed with Raptor Acid Etch Primer Aerosol for hard to reach areas that are difficult to sand. Prime the surface using a Raptor adhesion promoter. So we're gonna put this on pause and I'm going to prime that very fast. Um, I was under the impression that this would stick better to bare metal. That's why I left it bare and I didn't prime it. Uh, luckily, I do have some primer, so we're gonna do that real fast, so. Okay, while the primer is drying, bumper is completely primed. Just read through the instructions, and it says to add eight ounces of hardener. They send you a mixing cup with an eight fluid ounce line. And then, of course, we're gonna dump this whole bottle into here. And then it says add uh, around 5% paint, so I watched a video online where a guy said to use six ounces. Uh, so that's about what we're gonna do it for, is about six ounces of paint uh, to one of these bottles. So we'll use about 12 ounces in total. This is a quart. Um, I don't know how many ounces are in a quart, but I know there's enough. So, quick math. Now let's get our gun set up before we do anything else, because I would hate to get everything mixed, have our hardener in, and our gun not be set up. So I know they don't send you a pressure regulator with this. Uh, so if you don't already have a paint gun with a pressure regulator, um, I highly suggest getting one. Luckily, I already have one. So I'm gonna go ahead and get that set up. Oh yeah, look at that light prairie tan metallic right there. This is going to look absolutely sick. So you go up to the third line right there. Let's go ahead and do a Now, let's pour this in here. Go ahead and flip the next bottle over, that way all the stuff that's stuck to the bottom can come to the top. Shake this up some, see if we can get the rest of that paint out of there. I know it's not, but this stuff reminds me of pudding. Now I'm gonna pour it back into our mixing cup. So, you guys can see the flake in it. And what we just did basically was 
pour half in here, get it mixed up, and then pour the other half. When I poured it in, the paint was thinner than the bed liner, so all the paint went to the top, all the bed liner went to the bottom. Once we shook it up, got it mixed, and dumped it back out, we're all good. So now what we can do is pour eight fluid ounces of hardener, mix everything back together, and we will be set. So yeah, the only primer I had was red. Um, it's filler, fillable, sandable primer, but hey, it worked. Let's get paint. Let's get paint on it. Got our respirator, because I ain't trying to inhale bed liner. I've inhaled a lot of bad things in my life. I don't think bed liner should be one of them. A random spot. I mean, that looks like it worked. All right, ignore the fact that my crocs sound like SpongeBob walking through the Krusty Krab, but first coat is done. There is a 60 minute window in between coats. Um, I went a little too close in some spots, so like here you can tell I like wrinkled it up some. Um, I kind of did the same thing right here. Uh, I think there was like one more spot like right there, but this thing's textured, so I mean, in the end it should all blend in. I think it was a little thin. I think uh, that paint was left over in the mixing cup, kind of thinned it out a little too much, so it was like spraying a liquid, uh, but this looks absolutely sick. It's gonna look, God, get out of the garage. It's gonna look so rugged on the truck. So happy I went this route. Uh, it gives it such a, a rugged, off-road, beefy, like just badass look. And I'm very happy I went with it. So guys, this is not a sponsored video at all. I bought everything myself. I bought the Raptor liner, I bought the paint. I bought it all. Um, I can't lie, I reached out the Raptor liner for like the last seven months. No response. So. We're using it. Uh, Raptor Line, if you're watching this, I'd love to work with you in the future. Uh, I got a lot of ideas that I think you guys might like, so you should probably respond to some of my, my emails, but pick you guys up for the second coat in an hour. guys this is the finished product I mean it's not completely dry yet I just finished like five minutes ago but this is what it's gonna look like I'm I'm in love with it so like I was talking about with like the welds and everything not being perfect and like a little bit of slag and everything you're not gonna be able to tell everything looks perfect now anywhere where there's a little bit of slag you're not gonna be able to see it everything's all the same texture the only spot where we have where it's kind of different is right here where it like got blown up a little bit, but I'm gonna let this dry uh, probably overnight. Um, I'm gonna let it dry at least here for another five, six hours. I'm probably gonna move it over here. So I'm gonna have to pick up this video probably tomorrow or the next day when I get it back on the truck. I wanna let it dry for at least a day or two. Uh, give that Raptor liner some time to harden, truly dry and everything. Little mistake on my part, uh, I had put all the hardener that I, the eight fluid ounces in that little cup and I only mixed like six ounces in because last time I had some left over and then everything fit into the container and I like completely forgot to mix that other like two ounces of hardener. So that hardener was a little thin in that one. It's still enough to make it hard at least. Uh, does it all mix through? It's just gonna take longer for it to harden. So that's why I don't really wanna touch it for a little while, let this thing completely dry, completely harden, uh, but I love it. It's a little bit more textured than I wanted, uh, but I still think it's gonna look good. What's crazy about this is this still has all the metallic in it that the paint had. 
Uh, it's a little bit thinner than the paint, of course, and this is a little bit lighter. Like I said, I'm gonna pick you guys up in about a day or two when this can completely dry, but until then, I will see you guys then. Okay, it has been about five days since you saw me last. The bumper, I still think, has a little bit more. It could get hard, uh, but it's been sitting in the garage for about four days straight, so it could probably use some sunlight to finish hardening it. There's still some spots where like, it's still kind of soft, where like I can push it in with my finger. Uh, so I'm hoping sitting in the sun that might go away. It might not ever go away, so I don't know. Uh, but I'd say 95% of it is completely hard. So we're gonna get it back on the truck. Uh, I painted it, I wanna say last Wednesday and it's Monday. So it's been five days. It's been plenty of time. I'm gonna get it back on the truck. I didn't wanna risk ruining it, ruining this paint job, but I'm, I'm ready to see it. So I've got some jack stands set up. I'm gonna set some rags on top of them. Um, the bed liner shouldn't scratch easily. That's the whole point. I mean, doing this is so it doesn't scratch easily. Uh, so get some rags, put on the jack stands, get this thing carried over, get some bolts put in, get this thing tightened down. I'm ready to see what it looks like on the truck. I've been waiting almost an entire week now, so I'm ready. completely bolted down yet I still have to do the inside bolts but they're a little bit of a pain so I'm gonna do that off camera but holy crap this thing it looks sick oh my word and I gotta say that these bumpers are the easiest things to change uh, by yourself the f250 f350 bumpers they're, they're so easy to mount and unmount by yourself like even just doing this move bumper I did it by myself now it's a little bit off center. Uh, it's got to come this way, just a hair. I can tell this fender sticking out farther, and the bumper sticking out on this side. So gotta go that way, just a hair. But got it on in 14 minutes by myself. This thing looks so good. So before I do the final reveal for you guys, where I like I actually back the truck up so it's not just sitting in the driveway, you guys are gonna not see it with uh, the drill on, because the drill is behind my hand right now. Uh, but, as we'll see it without the drill, that's fine. But I'm gonna trim that fender, fender liner right there, behind the bumper, get that trimmed up, get our little dust shield thing down there, push back up into the bumper, but this thing looks sick. This thing, it looks awesome. And what's crazy is since this is the exact paint color, when it's in the sun, this bed liner has flake in it. It fully flakes with the truck. The sun hits the, the fender where it rolls and it's that nice sparkle to it. So does the bumper, it's insane. I never thought I would see bed liner with flake in it, but I love it. This thing looks so good. I'm sorry that there's no grill on the truck. I gotta wait until that video goes live. I can't spoil it for you guys. So you guys will probably see that in the, about a week. Guys, I love the bumper. And remember, like I said, when I built this bumper, in the description of every single video, there's a link that goes to Move's website, and it's an affiliate link. So if you guys click that, it already discounts what you're, what you're going for. So if you're trying to buy a bumper, you click that link, 
it's gonna go ahead and apply that code at checkout. You're not gonna have to do anything besides click the link and purchase a bumper. Now, unfortunately, by the time you guys are seeing this, prices have already went into effect, but Move had to raise their prices up to 10% to do with inflation. They tried to keep them as low as they could for as long as they could, but with everything going up, they had to raise their prices. They were no longer able to keep them where they were that where they were at. And that's understandable. Everything's going up. Um, thanks to everything that's going on in the country and the world, they couldn't they couldn't deal with it anymore. So they had to raise their prices up to 10%, but I can guarantee you they're still the cheapest bumpers on the market. And if you're doing a, a DIY weld kit, 100% cheapest bumpers on the market pick up a bumper for $700 like you're not going to get a bumper somewhere else for $700 you're just not going to but guys this looks sick I'm so happy that I did this and like I said I'll have a link in the description uh, not only for the bumper but for the Raptor liner the paint uh, so if you're wanting to do this yourself you can uh, I bought the paint off eBay you can literally just type in your paint code into the search box on eBay and probably find the same one I did. Uh, but I will link the one I use down below. You can check and see if they have the same paint code that you're looking for. Uh, but remember guys, if you haven't already, drop a like on this video. If this is your first time here, hit the subscribe button. I'll catch you guys in the next one. I love you all. Be fucking great. Peace out.